How's it going, fellas? Welcome back to another banger. This, uh, I'm joined here by my president, Jose, and uh, a very special guest right here, uh, Jojo Diaz, Joseph Diaz. How, how's it going, bro? Everything's going good, man. Enjoy my day off uh, with my 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 girlfriend, and uh, I, we're going to be going to Lake Havasu this weekend, bro. So just getting everything uh, ready for this weekend, man. So things are looking pretty good, man. I'm I'm excited. Oh damn, cool! I'm Lake House. I've never been out there, but I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll go out there one day, hopefully. Yeah, man. I mean, I haven't either, bro. It's my first time, so okay, my girlfriend go. is forced me out there, bro. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it, dog. So that's what's nice. up. Yeah. Let's get into it, brother. Let's get into it. How did you get into boxing? This is a question you always get asked. Yeah, man. I I I got into boxing when I was um I started when I was eight years old, uh, but then I quit, and then uh, I started going again when I was 11 years old because uh, I used to get picked on and bullied. Uh, guys used to try to fight me and stuff like that. I used to get beat up and I used to always go home with bruises and just scars and stuff like that. And uh, my dad ended up wanting me to, to learn self-defense. So he took me to the boxing gym. And um, when I was went to the boxing gym, one of the guys that used to bully me at the, uh, in my elementary school was, uh, he was actually there, he was a boxer. And uh, he came up to me and stuff with me and my dad and he was like, Yo, like you think you're you think you're tough, you think you're cool, um, let's spar and at the time I was with my dad and shit like that and I didn't know what, what the hell he was saying or I didn't know what sparring was. So I was just like, All right, give me a week and after like he starts laughing and stuff like that and uh like he was with his friends and stuff and then they walk away and then after my dad my my dad was like, Yo, you know what sparring is? I was like, nah, dad. And he was like, uh, sparring is when you, you're going to go in the ring with him in a week. He was like, you're going to fight him in a week. And after, like, I was, like, fucking scared and shit like that. But my dad was like, don't worry. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to practice. We're going to practice, uh, at the house and we're going to get ready for him and stuff like that. So uh, my dad started looking up YouTube videos and shit. Um, uh, just like, uh, YouTube videos of, of fighting and stuff on YouTube. And, uh, the first thing that my dad ever taught me was to throw a body shot, just throw mm. a lot of body shots. And I was practicing throwing body shots uh, right away when uh, when I was training with my dad. So when I went in there and I sparred this bully dude, I fucking, uh, uh, he came he came out all, like in shape and ready and shit like that. I came in, I was fat dude at the time because I was just a baseball player. So I was like really fat and stuff. And uh, I was out of shape, but I knew that I had a, a weight advantage on him. So uh, right when the the fight the fight started, man, I just started throwing body shots to him, dude, and I beat his ass, man. I stopped him, and I made him I I just made him look I made him bleed, I made him look silly. And then after that, I just fell in love with the sport, and then I just started continuing on, dude. And I just started competing, started fighting, and then uh, winning tournaments. And then after I won the tournament. At the at the age of seventeen, um, I was already ranked number one, uh, and uh, I wanted to turn. My we were struggling at the time financially, my, like my my family and my my my, my uh, parents. So I wanted to help make money with them so, for them. So I wanted to go in, uh, in to Mexico and start fighting uh, right away, uh, just so I could help out with the uh, like at the house and stuff for for like the rent and stuff. And uh, we uh, ended up, uh, I ended up, um, I ended up winning like a national tournament. And then I told my dad, like, hey, I'm ready to go pro and stuff like that. But then my dad was like, no, uh, Joseph, he was like, I, I want you to go to this next tournament. It's 17 to 34 year olds. It's called the U.S. Nationals. And he was like, 17 to 34 year olds. Um, he was like, if you do good in this and if I see you, uh, you're able to take the punches and stuff like that. Then I'll, I'll train you pro and stuff. Because uh, my dad at the time, like, uh, didn't want me to be in there with, the like, uh, older dudes getting hit if I didn't know how to take a punch or anything like that, especially, you know, uh, at such a young age and stuff. So then after, I was just like, all right, bet, man. So I ended up going to the national, uh, the national tournament. I won the district. I won the state. I went, I went to the regionals. I won the regionals. And then I made it all the way to the Nationals, and I won the Nationals, dude, uh, my, oh, at, at the age of 17. And then after that, I was ranked number one, and then USA Boxing started giving me 
uh, a monthly stipend, and I was getting that monthly stipend every month, bro. So I was able to help out the family and be training and shit like that, bro. So that's how that's how I ended up started like just really focusing on my boxing and training every day and stuff like that. Damn, that's pretty. That's yeah, huge. I was expecting that. I was. Yeah. That was impressive. Quite the backstory, and oh, yeah. uh, and you know, kind of staying on the, on the same narrative, but just kind of your backstory. How did you get the nickname JoJo? You know, who gave you that nickname, and you know, it just it just stuck. Yeah, it's just a fa like a family nickname, dude. Uh, all my friends back in the high school and uh, at the parks and stuff, where I, whenever I used to train, they all called me JoJo. So uh, I just stuck with, stuck with it. I didn't. I, I don't want my name, my nickname, to be anything, man. I just wanted it to be uh, Joseph Diaz Jr. But they're like, man, nah, leave it JoJo, JoJo, JoJo. Like it's catchy when. Like the fans are cheering you on and stuff like that, so I was like, "All right, <laughs> nice." Yeah, man, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty uh pretty cool, just simple nickname. I like that. I like that. Yeah, so yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, but uh, over there in the Fresno, I I was I was hearing some people say, "Ho, ho, ho, ho." Ah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> Still sticking on your amateur days. Um, a few names that stand out from your amateur amateur days are uh, Osaki Foster and Oscar Valdez. Do you recall your amateur fights with with them? Thoughts on what they have accomplished in the pros? Oh yeah, man. I, freaking the Oscar Valdez fight. I remember like it was yesterday, dude. Freaking uh, I was over there in Baku, Azerbaijan, and um, I was I I fought a couple guys already. Uh, uh. Um, this was after winning the Olympic trials. I uh, we had to go to a a world to, a road tournament in order to uh, in order to you know uh, to qualify to go to the Olympics. You had to place under six in the world at this world tournament. So there was a whole bunch of countries there, dude. And um, I ended up uh, winning two fights and then fighting Oscar Valdez. And this fight, this fight that me and Oscar Valdez had a fight was the fight that would qualify the winner to go to the Olympics in 2012. So at the time, man, it was a, it was a big fight, dude. And uh, um, everybody knew who Oscar Valdez was at the time because he was already ranked in the world. I think at the time he was ranked like six in the world or something like that. And I was ranked like freaking like 70 or something like that coming in, coming into the fight. Uh, but it was USA versus Mexico, so it was a big fight. And uh, we, we ended up fighting, man, and it was, a, it was a good fight, dude. We were duking it out, man, and I ended up uh, winning the fight, but by, uh, it was about, I think I won by like three or four points. It wasn't too, too much of a point difference, man, it was, but it was, a, it was a tough battle. Cool, 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 man. That's good. Nice. No, I, no. And uh, switching gears, uh, we want to talk about your pro debut, you know, back in December 2012 in Los Angeles. What were your emotions heading into your first pro fight? time dude i was ready for bro because uh i just wanted to make the money dude and i mean i, I had a good signing bonus with oscar de la hoya uh, i had a good uh my first uh, my first couple of years dude i had a good deal a good contract where um i was getting monthly stipend i had a good signing bonus i was uh, uh guaranteed eight fights so i was staying back dude. so everything was everything was good dude so um it was just, it was, it was good, but I, I knew that there was going to be like a lot of uh, hype around me. So I knew that I, I really had to, you know, up my game and stuff like that. So I was trying to learn the pro style as much as I could because uh, I, w I had, I had an amateur style. I feel like I, I would, I was throwing a lot. Not now, nowadays, it's more of a pro style, but back then it, it was more of an amateur style throwing a lot of stuff like that. Um, and you know you uh you have to be more crafty as a as a pro to in order to send you know tough shots to knock knock the guy out. So uh, I, I think I had to adapt a little bit. But other than that, man, I I had I had a, a really good uh, matchmaker, uh, Robert. His name is Robert Diaz from Golden Boy, and uh, he always you know we always had a, a good uh, relationship in terms of uh, making sure that. Uh, he wanted me to get get the good fights and get the tough fights, but also uh, make sure that you know I win these fights uh, and go through the adversity, uh, so that way you know later on down the line in, the, in in my pro career, 
it'll be beneficial for me. Right, right, right. Nice. Yeah, no, sh- shout out shout out to him. He's definitely one of the you know good matchmakers in the sport. And I just saw he signed um as I think the CEO of Sure Sports Management. So congrats yeah, to him. Yeah, right, right. I recently seen that. Are you, yeah, you man, shout out shout out to Robert, dude. For, for real, shout out to Robert. Yeah. Sir. You challenge your, yourself for the first world title, the WBC World World Featherweight versus Gary Russell Jr. back in uh twelve twenty eighteen. The result didn't go your way, unfortunately, that night. What can you tell us about that fight, and what did you learn from that loss? It was a um, it was a difficult loss, man. I mean, obviously, I wanted to win the fight, dude, but um, I felt like I was already struggling with the weight, and uh, at the time, man, I, I felt like the I, I I didn't really grasp the moment and take full advantage of the moment. I felt like with the fight, and also when I was fighting in there. Uh, the referee wasn't giving me favors. I felt like I dropped uh, Gary Russell uh, uh, one or two times with some body shots, but the referee didn't call call them the knockdowns or anything. So um, everything wasn't was in my favor. But uh, um, overall, it was still a great experience, dude. Just you know, fighting on that platform and uh, you know, getting that experience and stuff like that. But I was kind of you know sad and frustrated about everything that happened. But um, I just, I, you know, I had to move forward and just continue to work. Yeah. And then, Jojo, you, you did, you know, grasp the moment the next time out that you challenged for a world title. Um, you know, this time, the IBF World Super Featherweight title versus Tevin Farmer, uh, which, you know, you won convincingly. What did it mean to you to you know, become world champion? Oh, man, it meant a lot, man, because uh, the year before that, not even the year before that, like eight months before that, I brought, I, I, like um, I broke my hand. Well, I, it was like a dislocated, like little uh, hairline fracture in my wrist, and uh, I was kind of like, you know, freaking scared to use my left hand a lot. And uh, just dealing with that, with that uh, hand injury as well. But knowing that I was, I was going to be fighting, I I, I stood I stood on on. Uh, on Tevin Farmer's ass, man, on Twitter, dude. Uh, I made sure that uh, he found my presence, and I made sure that I built the hype right away. And he came to uh, one of the press conferences uh, during the Canelo, during the Canelo fight, too. So that built the hype as well, man. So uh, it was um, it was a great victory, knowing that you know I was able to you know get that get that W and and become world champion. Because I worked my life for it, man. So uh, it was still a dream come true. Absolutely, that's good, man. It's really good, good. Um, tell us about your your last fight with Oscar Duarte. Okay, tell us about it. Um, I thought to be honest, man. Um, I'm still a little frustrated about it. Yeah. I don't get why I don't get why the referee was 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 you know stopping the fight. I thought the fight was a very very close fight. I thought I was up uh, at least a round going into the ninth round. Um, and that ninth round, I felt like I was winning that round too, man. Um, he, you know, he he was strong and he wasn't any uh, hard shots, but I didn't get hurt. I didn't get hurt after the sixth round after he landed that shot where it wobbled my leg. So I feel like the referee shouldn't have stopped, uh, stopped it, but... It is what it is, man. I just kind of, you know, just keep more moving forward and adjusting. Uh, hats off to Oscar Duarte. He took advantage of the opportunity and seized the moment, and uh, I wish him nothing but the best. That's good, man. I always show respect. That's what we'll say. Yep. And then, uh, Jojo, what can you tell us about, you know, what the future holds for you? You know, have you already begun looking at a, a, your next fight date? Yeah, man. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm getting a lot of things done in my personal life right now. So uh, I'll be fighting again in October. Um, I have a fight lined up in October. Uh, I don't want to announce the opponent yet or anything, but it's definitely going to be in October. And I'm hoping it's out here in uh, Ontario or Anaheim. Um, I feel like it will it will sell uh, it will sell pretty well uh, in those cities. So uh, that's what I'm pushing for, and I'm hoping everything you know goes well. And uh, 
we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, eventually, in the later few weeks, uh, if everything gets finalized as far as you know the location there. But uh, the opponent's already done, and we got it for October. So I'll be back in October. That's dope. Okay. We'll be on the lookout for the official news when you drop them. Yes, sir. That's some. That's some very, very good news. Mm-hmm. The next question would yeah, be. Man, uh, I, I, I appreciate it, bro. I appreciate it. Of course. Who is the who is the hardest uh puncher you've been with either sparring or in the ring? Um, Oscar Duarte was definitely the hardest yeah. the hardest puncher dude. He uh he he hit pretty hard. Um, uh, it was his his punches were electrifying, dude. Uh, whenever he <laughs> whenever you got hit by it, dude, you, you felt the pain. It was it was it was crazy, man. You felt numbness. Uh, you felt pain whenever you he would hit you and shit. So uh. Um, he he did he did have really really uh, strong power. Yeah, I mean us uh, us on on TV we see it differently, but when when that person is getting hit, that's when you really feel it, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean obviously he he landed a good shot in the sixth round, but uh the, the ninth round, man, I felt like like I said, I felt like I was dictating the pace, and uh, he got me in the corner. I mean against the ropes, he landed. Uh, he he. Do a couple a couple combinations, didn't land anything flush, but then the referee came and stopped the fight. So um, it was it was just frustrating. I mean, because at the end of the day, man, I needed those last two rounds, and in order for me to uh, hold on, in 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 order in order for me to uh, you know really take advantage and, and win those two rounds. I had to I had to take chances and I had to bang in there with Oscar Duarte. And that's what I was trying to do. I was trying. He his punches weren't as effective anymore because he was tired. So I wanted to be in, in the inside more and land my shot uh, to break him down more. Um, but the referee wasn't giving me the, giving me that option, dude. Uh, it, was, it was just uh, it was just frustrating. You know, Jojo, who was your favorite boxer growing up? Um, definitely Floyd Mayweather, man. It was Mickey, Mickey Wright, Mickey Wright, and Floyd Mayweather, bro. Nice, can't go wrong with either. <laughs> yeah, the man. Names. Cool, God, bro. I loved, uh, I loved Mickey Wright, bro, because he used to come out, uh, he used to come out fucking with like dope ass outfits, cool ass music, sick ass ring walk, dude. It was, it was <laughs> badass. <laughs> yes, sir, and let, let 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 us get your prediction on on this uh, next fight coming up. Is uh Javante Davis with Frank Martin? What's your predictions on that? Um, I think uh, I think for the first maybe two rounds, it's gonna be a little technical. After the third round, it's gonna be more physical, and uh, I think Javante Davis knocks him out in by four or five rounds. Damn. Yeah, yeah it's, gonna, I, it's a technical fight. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, Frank Martin's a good fighter, but I just think that uh, he's just gonna get caught with the shot that he don't see coming, and it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, a really brutal knockout. No, yes, sir. Yeah. And then we want to ask you about another lightweight matchup. This is between uh, two undefeated prospects. It's uh, Ashton H.O. Sylvie. Versus Floyd Kid Austin uh, Showfield. How do you see that one playing out? Bro, I, I I just I just found out that they're fighting. Oh, you're the first one ever seen. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just seen it today, dude. I was like, oh shit, no way. I was like, damn, that's that's actually a really good fight. It's a it's a tough fight, and uh, man, it's a it's a fifty fifty fight because I just sparred um, Ashton about uh, I would say maybe a month and a half ago. Uh, getting, re- getting, getting ready for the, uh, no, actually three months ago, getting ready for the Jesus Press fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I was partying and, uh, it was, uh, he, he's a good fighter, man. He's a good, strong fighter and he's, he's awkward. And I think that, uh, if he catches Kid Austin, he, he can knock him out. So, uh, it's, it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Salute to both fighters for taking on the challenge early in the careers. Yeah, oh yeah, man. I mean, it's just that's what boxing is all about now, bro. It doesn't matter about losses, man. It's just 
it really matters about, you know, giving the five fans an exciting fight, uh, doing what you love, working hard, and, uh, you know, achieving what you want to achieve. Yeah, and uh, you're the perfect example of that, JoJo. You know, like, you, you, you don't have a perfect record, but we keep wanting to see you back because you give us, you know, fan-friendly fights. I mean, yeah, man, I, I, try, my, I try my best, bro. Uh, no matter what I go through in my personal life, I mean, everybody lost my you know, what if, what if this, what if that, and stuff like that. But I already made, you know, content happiness with my, within myself. I'm happy with my, you know, with my family now, with my beautiful daughter that I have, uh, my beautiful son. And I, I still do what I love, man. And I, I still want to challenge, you know, the best fighters out there. So uh, I'm still going to go out there and give the five fans what they want to see and, you know, just give it all as much as I can uh, until, you know, it's all said and done. I think I still have a few more years in me, dude. Uh, but uh, it is going to be, you know, the ending of my career pretty soon. But I, I still think I have a few more years in me that I want to, you know, contribute to trying to, you know, uh, get a, get another comeback run for or another like another run for it for for the fight fans and for my for myself and for my family. So we're gonna do it. Yes, sir. Cool, cool, cool. Finish, finish on top. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, let, let's let yeah, it. Um, either, that, either that or either that or somebody's going to have to knock me out, dog. Either <laughs> there that you or go. somebody's going to have to knock me out. Because yeah. I'm, 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 I'm coming for everybody, dog. That's there what's you up. So you keep it pushing until the wheels fall off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let, um, any, any quick message you want to send to your fans and supporters before we close out this interview? Yeah, man. I just want to say uh, just to, to everybody, I hope you guys are you know, uh, just, you know, living your guys' life and living whatever you guys want to achieve, uh, putting God first. Make sure you guys, you know, follow Jesus Christ. And if you guys haven't repented to him, make sure you guys make sure you guys do. Um, but he's still with you either way. He still loves you either way. Um, and uh, I'm excited for my next fight in October. I'm excited to announce who I'm fighting. It's a, it's a really good, you know, comeback fight. And it's going to be an exciting fight for the fight fans. So uh, thanks again for all, all you guys' support. And thank you guys for, you know, still tuning in to my career. And I'll see you guys soon. Perfect. Thank you, Joe. Joe. We appreciate you taking the, the time away from planning your, your girls' B-Day weekend. I'm sure it's going to be a success. And it's a pleasure yeah, to have you boxing with you. Right now, bro. She's right here. <laughs> hey, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, it. No, I appreciate it, man. We'll, we'll, we'll be tuning in. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joe. Joe. All right. Thank you. All right, bye. bye.